Hi, how are you? In this video, I'm going to be giving you five data-driven tactics for how to address, overcome, however you want to put it, sales objections, common sales objections. And my experience with selling is basically also my experience as an entrepreneur. Uh, hi, my name is Matt. I'm the CEO and founder of autogrow.co, in case you don't already know. And recently, we actually passed our 10 year anniversary since I founded Autogrow. Oh my God, can't believe it. Uh, 10 amazing years of just, just nonstop learning. And a lot of that time is spent around sales and marketing and you know, learning what is persuasive, what is not, what is a good sale, what is not a good sale. Uh, because there's there's a difference um, and you know like we we all see it in the movies and the movies get it they get it completely wrong they're always showing you you know wall street you know the the boiler room type of sales situation where it's just high pressure you know like the guys on the phone like oh my god like you know you need this opportunity you know put in 10 grand you know and then he says and then doctors on the other line, okay, I'm going to invest in this stock, 10 grand, sounds great. And then the sales guy says, live a little. And then the doctor says, all right, 15, you know, so, something like that. That's not how sales are made, not in my experience anyway. Um, and my approach, which I find has just had like an amazing close rate, and, and also I, I do it in a way that uh, builds trust, is I actually don't try to sell at all. Um, and yes, I do all the best practices. Yes, I have the goal of closing the sale, but only if I sincerely believe that it's going to, if I, you know, believe in the product slash service, which I do, um, and I believe it's a fit, you know, a fit for the customer or client, you know, then I'm, I'm selling like not to get all woo woo on you or anything, but then I know that I'm selling from a place of um, just genuineness and I, I'm this, I'm just not trying. You know, and it's and it's not, uh, and it's very sustainable too, because most often then there's there's no buyer remorse, right? And it's just it's just an easy conversation, and it's the opposite of what people may go into the call expecting. You know, there's no hard sell at all. So, uh, having sold uh, well over a million dollars in in sales, um, I. I think it's, uh, I haven't actually tracked it, but I know it's well over a million. It might be in the millions at this point. Um, a lot of that coming in just the last um, recent months. So um, anyway, uh, let's, let's get into tactic number one for how to overcome, address, answer very common uh, sales objections that you might deal with, whether you're talking in person to someone, talking with a phone, talking on a Zoom call, because, I mean, when you do that, you know, your, your, your close rate um, is going to be much higher than if you're just selling, you know, through your, uh, your website, for example. But obviously, it depends on your market and your price point and what exactly you're selling, okay? Uh, but in particular, if you're selling high ticket, uh, these are just going to be super relevant to you because, you know, you, you just, you don't have to worry. Just focus on taking action on these steps. So. Tactic number one, take a breath. Just uh, take a breath before addressing any objection that comes up. You know, don't, don't try to fight it. Don't be like, oh my God, I have to close this. Just don't even think about it that way. Um, you know, uh, there was, there's this form of martial arts that was pioneered uh, by uh, Bruce Lee and, and, the, and the guy who trained Bruce Lee in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, Bruce Lee helped to popularize it. Um, it was a type of martial arts where, you know, as Bruce Lee said in one of his famous axioms, quotes, you know, use no way as way, have no limitation as your limitation. And what he meant by use no way as way as, you know, you, you're, you're often, you wanna be as efficient as possible and you know, if you're in the ring with an opponent, obviously, you know, very different from an actual sale, but uh, they're similar in the way that, you know, you, you may have some sort of an objective and your objective should be in sales. Okay. Is this prospect qualified? And if so, okay, then how do we 
in the most agreeable way possible get to that sale. But with Jeet Kune Do, oftentimes you're, you're using uh, the opponent's own momentum, force, energy against them. Um, and I think that's similar for other similar uh, martial arts. But Jeet Kune Do didn't really subscribe to any particular uh, form or style necessarily. It was able to be whatever it needed to be to, to win the match. Um, so getting back to the tactic here, though, simply uh, pausing to take a breath, uh, a simple pause after a prospect brings up an objection, it can make it easier for you to successfully address it. Um, but there's also an underlying reason why you want to take a breath uh, or just, you know, just, just let the question hang for a second. And I've watched some very persuasive, very successful salespeople do this in various situations. Um, even in even in a one-on-one -on -one interview or, or phone call, uh, when it was there wasn't even necessarily a sale to be made, but there was maybe some sort of persuasion marketing element at play. Um, and the reason why you want to pause is because because it gives space for you know okay so like the your 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 prospect on the call they're they're bringing up a reason right, but oftentimes there's more behind that. You know, it, there's often an emotional reason, like okay, uh, you know, fear, uh, an underlying, you know, other cause that maybe is not being said. And so, when you pause, you know, number one, you can use that opportunity to be thoughtful and think about, okay, is this the real question, or is there another question or concern behind this? And oftentimes, you'll get an idea just by, you know, about how better to respond. Or what will happen is the prospect will just keep talking and will give you more information because sometimes the silence can be a little uncomfortable. Um, why is this person pausing? You know, um, so they, they and and if it's fear, oftentimes you know, like that's it's very easy to uh, to detect that because they'll fill the silence with a little more detail around what's you know what might be bothering them. So according to a study from Gong which analyzed 67,149 67, sales calls, uh, they found that the top sales staff paused five times longer than average performers after being confronted with an objection, okay? Um, and I suspect that big part of the reason why they were higher performers was because, um, not just because they were pausing to be thoughtful, but also for the reason that I just explained to you. So don't rush into your explanation, be strategic, listen, think, allow the silence to be filled maybe with some more detail, more explanation, all right? Tactic number two is practice active listening. Active listening is making a conscious effort to actively listen to your prospect's concerns so that they can one, better understand uh, your, you can better understand your customer's objections. And two, let your customers know that you understand where, uh, where, you're, where you're coming from, okay? Um, in other words, you're just kind of connecting with what they're saying. And I, I've done this very often. Like I'll actually just pick up on uh, certain like phrases and, and words that they're using and I'll actually kind of be like a mirror in a way you know, talking in that same vocabulary of what I detect is really important to them. And I don't have an example right off the top of my head, but just like some specific phrases that stand out, you just want to be really attentive to and you can repeat them back to them. I mean, the most basic kind of robotic way that you can do this, it's, it's similar to what psychologists and psychiatrists uh, and, and just psych psychological studies have um, confirmed, which is that you know, when you, um, it's also a negotiating tactic. Um, uh, I think there was a, a book recently, this, um, what was the name of the book? But just gr great book on negotiation. Uh, it was by this guy who walked, worked for the FBI doing negotiation in hostage situations. You can find it with a quick search on, on Amazon. Um, but a big, the same exact tactic is basically saying, you know, it seems like, it sounds like, it looks like, and then summarizing, you know, what it is that the person is saying, okay? Because, and, and why does that work? Why is that confirmed by psychological studies? It's because it's a very basic fundamental human need 
to want to be heard, to want to be understood. And there are a variety of reasons of that. You know, many times it leads back to childhood. Um, but in either case, as humans, we all want to be heard. We all want to be understood. We all want to feel important. And, um, you know, the ideal scenario is where you summarize, you know, by doing active listening back their, their position uh, to the prospect. And they would say, that's right. You know, because that's, because um, there's a shift that can really happen in conversations when you get to that point, you might, and you've done it enough times, you might notice when that shift happens because the person just, they feel like there's more rapport built there. Like they, they just trust you, okay? Um, final stat on this, sales hacker found that the bottom 20% of sales people, the bottom 20% of sales people spent over 65% of conversations pitching their products, but top closers spent just over 40% pitching. The rest was spent listening to the customer. And, and this, is, this just totally supports and I feel you know, totally vindicated by what I was saying earlier because you know, great sales are not like boiler room sales. Buy now, buy this stock, 10,000, live a little. Not like that. Um, like when I get on a sales call, sometimes like, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm really terrible at like, time management. In the past when I have, you know, I haven't been doing sales calls recently with clients, but um, I'll just stay on the call forever because I'll just keep listening. I'll just let them talk. And, you know, I'll just find the opportunities of where what they're saying matches with the need or problem, uh, or rather the, the need or, or problem that our uh, solution can fulfill on and connect to. Um, so, but I won't, I won't, really speak unless I'm connecting with what they're, with what they're saying. So I, I do spend a lot of time just asking questions and listening and, you know, not saying like, Oh, you know, special offer buy now, you know, like, you know, we, we do do that sometimes. Sure. But you know, it's more of a, more of a conversation, a lot more listening, um, listening in general, just, just shut up, <laughs> shut up and listen. Probably great sales advice in general. Tactic number three, avoid monologuing and keep the flow going. Many salespeople end up having a knee-jerk reaction to an objection. That reaction is often monologuing, going into super long, super in-depth rants to address a particular objection, which is overkill and can actually turn prospects off uh, to the idea of buying your product or service. So again, um, you, it's really great if you are someone who meditates or you're open to the idea of meditation because this helps you to be in the moment to have some sort of um, deeper self uh, awareness and in general you want self-awareness to avoid this mistake of monologuing uh, because you know it's um, you want to fill the call with information that is only connecting ideally nothing is extraneous nothing is extra nothing is superfluous how many different vocabulary words can i think of for this uh so you want to be um saying what's relevant to your potential client or customer and pretty much nothing else and otherwise just let them talk and and that's it so if, you, if you're going like this on and on and on the client's going to go like you know, like get distracted. They're not going to trust you. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to be too disengaged because if you're just like, uh huh, and the client is totally leading the call and there's no, you're not doing any sort of steering, you know, you're not going to close. You know, you're not going to close. You're not going to uh, move the call and the prospect and the lead forward towards the sale. So uh, in addition to this, um, it turns out that top performing salespeople spent half as much time answering a prospect's objection, okay? And this also relates to an article that I read the other day. Uh, it was taken from some, some notes, I believe, from a TED Talk turned into an article where there's another psychological principle of averaging, where if you give people just like a list of reasons for something, 
rather than just giving, you know, your top number one best argument, you know, you know, the, 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 the brain, the human brain will kind of like take the average of all three. Uh, in addition, you know, there is uh, plenty of psychological research showing that if you give a list of items, you know, typically of, of 10 or more people are really going to remember the ones at the beginning and at the end, they just forget everything in between because that's how our memories work. But plus, top performers, uh, in addition to spending half as much time answering a prospect's objection, top performers kept the flow going the same as if it was uh, before the question uh, with about three speaker switches per minute versus under two per, for average performers. Okay, so, so the back and forth, it's, it's engagement. It doesn't allow a lot of time. You know, there's rhythm. It's not a lot of time for your prospect to get bored. They feel engaged. They're, they're awake. They need to respond to whatever your questions are. Okay. And you're both getting valuable information. Number four, tactic number four. Tactic number four. Respond to leads quickly. Salespeople who respond to inquiries in under five minutes are 100 times more likely to connect with prospects and 21 times more likely to qualify them according to lead response management. Early bird uh, obviously gets the worm here in this case, but this principle applies to addressing objections too. The earlier that you can get in touch with contacts, the better because the longer you wait, number one, the more time they'll have to think about you know, why you're not a good fit. Uh, number two, the more they'll be able to research your competitors and get a better idea of the differences in pricing and features. Number three, the more ammunition they'll have for firing objections at you when you do get on the phone. Because when prospects contact you, uh, just the sooner that you can book the call, get on a call with them, talk to them, and that's when they want the answers, like right then and there. So if you pick up the phone when they call, you're going to get, you know, just like probably one of the best quality leads, like right in that moment. The next best scenario is, you know, if they're booking a time, they should have a time open for them, you know, either that same day or the next day, just as soon as possible. Because that's when they want answers. So just give them what they want as soon as possible. And finally, uh, tactic number five, ask plenty of questions. Data shows that the more questions you ask on sales calls, the better odds, the, the better the odds will be of closing the sale. And I agree with this. And the reason why I agree from experience is that when I've been on sales calls, you know, you, there's, there's a correlation here because if you're asking questions, you're getting more data. Okay, getting more data on what may or may not connect that prospect with what your solution is and the problem that they are looking to solve and their preferences for how it should be solved. And in your responses, then you can give the most informed uh, answers, not just to objections, but information about the product uh, that is most relevant um, to what it is that they're actually asking you. So um, yeah, ask questions, ask thoughtful questions. It, it also, uh, should come from a place of authority, you know, because if you're just sitting back and you're just like, ask me whatever questions you want, you know, I'm just, I'm just here, you know, it's not, it's not a great, it's not a great look because it doesn't position you as an authority on your products. Um, and while apathy can actually sell, you want to be apathetic in the towards the idea of actually closing the sale or not, because ultimately you kind of want to like, just act like it's totally out of your hands. Like yes, persuasion and influence is, is real. Uh, but otherwise don't focus on that because otherwise you're going to get into hard sell tell it territory and that's actually going to push clients away more and or cause buyer remorse, which you don't want. So ask thoughtful questions to gather data. Uh, and that will also give you, data to give more thoughtful responses. Sales Hacker found that there was a direct correlation between the number of targeted questions asked and the rate of success. And some more uh, notes that I have going on here, some more data. So 84% of customers said that being treated like a person and not a number 
was important to earning their business. Okay. And that just goes to the point I was just saying of, you know, avoid, avoid the hard sell, avoid getting into that territory. Uh, but it's worth saying you don't want to ask too many questions. So don't go overboard with this, you, you know, minimum viable effectiveness um, on this point. Sales Hacker found that the success rate actually dropped, went down, it dropped when, you, uh, when, when the sales person asked more than uh, 14 targeted questions on a call. So it's a great idea to have some sort of uh, questions templated out that are most common that are going to give you, you know, the best possible data to give the most thoughtful responses and drive the sale and the conversation forward. All right, so those are five tactics that can help you to address objections and boost your sales. And speaking of boosting your sales, um, if you own a business, if you are in marketing, uh, if you're looking to grow in general, you should check out autogrow.co because with Autogrow, you can delegate all of your digital marketing projects and tasks without the headaches of hiring. And the best way to explain it is that it's like project management software, but with proven pros already inside, ready and waiting to get work done for you. So if, for example, you want to build landing pages, funnels, ads, uh, entire WordPress websites, whatever it is, if you can dream it, we can do it. And we can save you all the time of doing it yourself and you don't have to worry about going to various marketplaces to try to find talent to do it for you. You just sign up and we already have your account staffed with professionals. And the only limit on the different packages is based on the amount of work that you want to get done or you want to delegate to us. So you log in after selecting your package, you log in, you type up some notes on whatever tasks or projects you want to delegate to us. You hit the button that says, make it real to submit your request. Uh, and then we get right to work on it. You can sit back and watch the progress bar as it goes from zero to 100%. And this is great for you because you, know, you don't have to do the work, but if you're focused on, say, sales in your business, you, know, you can focus ex more, much more exclusively on that. I was, just, I was actually just chatting before this, uh, this video with someone who wants to do exactly that. So taking more work off of his plate, because um, he's a former designer uh, starting up his own agency and he can just focus on closing sales. Uh, meanwhile, we just do the, we do the fulfillment and get the, the work done um, for, uh, for his clients, for example. So check it out. Delegate all your digital marketing tasks and projects without the headaches of hiring. Check us out at autogrow.co. And as always, Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button, tap it, don't smash it, don't injure it, just tap it if you like this video. Uh, also hit subscribe and leave a comment whether you're watching this on autogrow.co or you're on our blog or you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment. Uh, love hearing from you guys and what you most connect with and how I can better serve you going forward. All right, so until next time, keep auto growing, stay focused. I'll talk to you soon.